Have you ever seen someone completely change their personality and demeanor when an attractive person enters the room? I have seen acquaintances who generally keep a calm and collected persona start almost frothing at the mouth with excitement when a beautiful woman enters the room. I have no doubt in my earlier years also behaved in the same manner. In the presence of beauty, some people's energy changes entirely. It is as if they are under a spell or the influence of a drug. I have seen on many occasions a beautiful woman entrancing a man without words, with merely her presence. Oftentimes the man becomes very upbeat, light-hearted and jokey. I recall a former boss of mine who would suddenly become weak in the knees and overly bubbly and agreeable when an attractive woman came to the office. He would change from a strict authoritative personality into a friendly, effervescent, happy-go-lucky type of guy. The atmosphere would become light and friendly, and he would giggle and joke around until she had gone, and after that he would return to his strict and serious disposition. It is almost as if some men's biology changes in the presence of a beautiful woman. After all, we are designed for procreation, and an attractive mate seems to trigger this biological imperative within us. As Aldous Huxley wrote, beauty is worse than wine. It intoxicates both the holder and beholder. There are of course men who maintain their sense of self regardless of who is in the room and don't try to modulate their personality based on the attractiveness of others around them. I believe this to be a mark of good character. What is the difference between a man who is intoxicated by desire and a man who remains composed and unaffected in the face of temptation? Self-control Self-control is a very important trait for a man to have, yet many men are unable to rein in their lustful feelings. A man with good character puts his values before all else. A man with excessive lust will often undermine his own values in pursuit of its fulfillment. The lustful man is a slave to the flesh, and thus the mere sight of a woman's beauty renders him weak. A man who cannot control his passions reveals a weakness of his character and personality. Perceptive humans, or perhaps older humans, will more readily perceive this weakness of character in the man. A man who is controlled by lust often reveals it in subtle ways. He will drop inadvertent hints. Often, he may interpret parts of speech in a lewd way, or inject his speech with sexual innuendo. This will generally become more pronounced after a few drinks of alcohol. A man who cannot control his sexual desires will be more willing to act out of self-interest, in order to fulfill those desires he strongly craves. Intense lust can easily erode rational thought and moral judgment. It essentially renders one selfish and stupid. How many times have we seen on TV the man who stumbles over his words when the beautiful woman speaks to him? Or the beautiful cheerleader in class who is just as daft as she is beautiful? A beautiful person can just as easily become infatuated with their own beauty and suffer greatly from this infatuation too. As the story goes, Narcissus, the beautiful youth, caught his own reflection in the lake and became consumed by his own image. He remained there, enamoured by his own image, until he eventually lost his will to live and wasted away. Often, we label a man who is hooked to chemical substances as a junkie. We know that a junkie will oftentimes go to great lengths to acquire their fix. They may cheat, deceive, and steal in order to get what they need. Such an effect can happen to a man hooked by lustful thoughts. They become an addict to lust. By extension, we can see how external things that try to sexually tempt man or draw lust from him can be destructive. A society of people hooked on beauty and images of the flesh will ultimately degenerate and deteriorate. We have seen anthropologists such as Unwin reach these conclusions studying monogamous and sexually liberal societies. Lust carries the power to weaken a society and ultimately destroy the goodness inherent in man. 
it is no wonder that the ancient authors of the scriptures strongly warned us of this danger. Even in a physiological sense, the premature awakening of the sexual desire was said to have a negative effect on the organism. Early to ripe, early to rot. The engagement of the reproductive function requires energy and constant feeding of nourishment, which is drawn from the body. A constantly lustful state is continually drawing on these energies and thus sapping them from all other regions of the body. This idea is further supported by summer theory that explains that reproduction shortens the life of the organism. If you are striving to succeed on semen retention, then I assume you are also striving to be a better quality human being. Acting for the good of your fellow man, sharing with others, having love for your neighbor, these are qualities that will make you more valuable and more useful in this world. And those that prove useful in this world will go on to lead worthwhile and fulfilling lives. Those that live for the fulfillment of physical desires will render themselves depleted and put themselves on a trajectory of suffering and degeneration. This is the deeper meaning behind semen retention. It is about becoming a better man in all senses of the word. A moral man, a manly man, a man with good character, we are holding on to the life-giving fluid. When we emit it from the body, it takes our own life with it. A man depleted without abundant life must hold on to what little he has left. He must go into survival mode, and this state of being makes it hard for him to serve anyone other than himself. He is of no use to this world, and nature does not support those that do not give back to nature. You can call this karma, or simply cause and effect. But you need to become productive in this world, to provide value to others, help mankind evolve. Nature will reward you accordingly. Make sure your heart is in the right place. Your existence was a gift given to you. Feel appreciation for it. No matter how hard things get, pay your dues by being useful to the world. You will realize as you get older that there is much evil in this world. It all stems from selfish desire. And for men, sexual desire dominates. Rid yourself of this poison and you will no longer be a slave to its influence. Not many can do this, but if you manage to eliminate lust, a whole new world will open. New opportunities will come your way. You will become capable of doing things that most people cannot. You will exert more energy and effect more change, and over time people will greatly benefit from your existence. This will come back to you in many ways. It will give you meaning to live. Start semen retention and you start out on a new journey in life. You may even change the world. Your concentrated efforts and directed energy will make waves and influence all those around you. In my own experience, I started retention as a musician years ago, and within 12 months I got my first job producing for a major Korean pop group, had a song released by a world-famous DJ, and signed a major licensing deal that netted me decent-sized royalties. You don't know my identity, and I don't say this to boast or brag, just to show you how compelling the effects of semen retention are. All fields of work require energy, and the best in those fields will require higher levels of energy and vitality to carry on intensely for a long period of time, without losing steam. Part of the reason semen retention will put you on the road to success is because you are learning to overcome the influence of desire and lust. When sexual desire has a strong hold over your mind, it hinders the mental faculties and prevents deeper inquiry of thought. Saint Augustine is one of Christianity's most influential theologians and philosophers. He profoundly impacted how the Bible is interpreted today. Before his conversion to Christianity, he led a life marked by hedonism and was heavily involved in pursuits of pleasure, including sexual lust. It was after renouncing these passions that he rose to his callings and went down in the pages of history for his great contributions. He wrote, There are lusts for many things, 
and yet when lust is mentioned without the specification of its object, the only thing that normally occurs to the mind is the lust that excites the indecent parts of the body. This lust assumes power not only over the whole body and not only from the outside but also internally. It disturbs the whole man. When the mental emotion combines and mingles with the physical craving, resulting in a pleasure surpassing all physical delights. So intense is the pleasure that when it reaches its climax, there is an almost total extinction of mental alertness. The intellectual centuries, as it were, are overwhelmed. Saint Augustine is living testament to the divine heights one can reach when he escapes the shackles of lust. Huxley, Newton, Tesla, Gandhi, so many of the greats expressed this same sentiment towards lust and its ability to hinder man's progress. When millions of men are made slave to lustful thoughts, then society becomes enslaved by this impulse. In order to not only free ourselves of this negative energy, but to free our society from it too, we must conquer lust and not be subservient to the temptations of the flesh. We must become immune to the temptations of beauty. We must not allow the physical stimuli of beauty to stimulate us excessively and affect our temperament. We must learn how to switch off this desire and not allow it to control our senses. Breaking free from the enticement of beauty will give you control over your mind. It will give you the power and ability to achieve much more out of life. As Seneca said, most powerful is he who has himself in his own power.